The topic of this year's conference is about uh, fintech and how fintech can uh, change not only the financial system, but how we are going to change the way we interact with each other, the way we purchase, the way we save, the way we invest. And, uh, and in fact, uh, most of our financial transactions, how they will be changed. Technology hasn't delivered yet. Um, you know, financial services to a level that uh, was expected with the internet. And, and so when, when you look around a neighborhood like this, you see lots of transactions and, and commerce going on, people talking to each other. Uh, but somehow there's still so many frictions into uh, delivering good services. So I think part of the problem is around cryptocurrencies and blockchain is to lower the cost of providing the services and uh, re-enabling all sort of new interactions. Digitization. We're making everything digital. We're taking people out of the equations of transactions. Accompanying digitization, you're always going to worry about the security part. And so that's what the blockchain is. Let me do digitization and convince you you don't have to worry about the security piece. It's unhackable. There. Done. What's happening now in the digital age is we're moving to an era where we're spending less and less in terms of coinage and we're doing transactions, for example, on a cell phone and they're digital transactions. So think about blockchain as a series of safes that we put things into. And these safes are linked together so that if I try to open one, I've got to open many others. If Alice sends Bob 10 ethers, then that transaction gets locked with other transactions into a block. And that's what we call mining a block. And now, those transactions can never be altered. A lot of the innovations, especially the cryptocurrencies, were created after the 2008 crisis. Uh, some, some people were concerned about the fact that some of the central bankers could be abusive in the sense that they could um, print a lot of currency without any real backup. Bitcoin is the longest one. It's been there for a while. Uh, people understand it. It's very simple, so you can only do so much with Bitcoin. Therefore, it's been extremely robust. Uh, there's been a number of acts and you know money being stolen at the edges, but the protocol itself has been very resilient. Each of the little technologies that's part of blockchain we knew about, but nobody put it together in the way that the Nakamoto Satoshi put it together, you know, where, whereby you really couldn't cheat. Now that we understand it's possible, now we've got people like Silvio Macali coming along and saying, okay, I can do it better. In Algorand, uh, what happens is that, uh, first of all, there are no miners, so there is only one class of users, the people who have money in the system, and it makes sure that uh, the blockchain remains strong and secure. Silvio's contribution, I think, is going to change dramatically the way uh, cryptocurrencies are going to be designed in the future. I think if we come back in 10 years, maybe you know we'll be walking around and everybody will be paying, paying with digitally. <laughs> we'll have better digital central banks. And they will definitely will be uh, protecting the citizens that way. So these are countries where actually having that currency would help. Will, will, will improve the standards of living. I hope this uh, conference is the start of a very big and long conversation between MIT and the region. Uh, not only Argentina and Chile, but the whole uh, Latin America. Uh, a lot of the problems that take place in emerging markets are different from the problems that happen in developed nations. And, uh, and I do think that fintech will have a much bigger impact in the world uh, when we concentrate on emerging market issues rather than uh, on developed nations one.